we, if, for those of us that have been in the space for quite some time, um, you know, we've had incremental um, service, you know, like our, 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 our roll-ups, you know, UR1, 2, 3, or, you know, the, the uh, service updates when we've been working either online or on-prem. So um, there were major releases maybe annually, and then we had service roll-ups uh, throughout that time to really give us that kick and give us a lot more, um, uh, you know, functionality incrementally as we go. Um, but in the new age, um, we're going to be realizing uh, updates, uh, be those, you know, the, the minor updates. Um, at the very end, you're going to have your 9.0.1.0 you know, three, four, three, four uh, iteration numbers right there. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna feel those, or we're gonna experience those as we go. Um, but really, you know, this vision that Microsoft has, you know, the one platform and one Microsoft, um, you know, this, this service that we're going to, to be leaning on, uh, we're gonna realize those releases, the. Uh, it, in real time, you know, everybody's going to have these roll out. Now there are some, there are some details within that statement, but um, you know, we're moving away from, from uh, being able to stave off updates um, to realizing them in real time. Now for those that are very solution or rather, uh, you know, release management oriented or, uh, you know, there, there's some risk there, sure, you know, but uh, Microsoft's really trying to be on top of a proper cadence and uh, providing the proper support when these, these, uh, updates are going through. So um, in terms of the, the nitty gritty and some of the details, we're gonna have two major updates per year. Um, so we're looking at a spring release and a fall release. Now those are gonna be bundled with a lot more features, a lot more functionality, um, newly introduced components, very you know enhanced features. Um, throughout the year in between, we will have some service updates and some things here and there, but you know the big ones, uh, the big guns are gonna be coming in the spring and the fall. So they're targeting uh, April and October and I, put kind of there because they are going to initially release a major update and then keep phasing in pieces of that major release in subsequent weeks. So we're not going to see, you know, come October 15th or 21st, whenever, whenever that comes through, we're not going to see this massive change to our core systems, you know, be them um, lower environments, sandbox environments, or production environments, and go, wow, things have drastically changed. This is this is more along, um, you know, the lines of scalability and, and really trying to not impact any production environments, making sure that things are, um, you know, in a in a in a proper sequence, in a controlled sequence, as we're seeing these updates. So, hence the kind of they will be phased a little bit. Still backward compatible. I mean, that's going to be crucial. Any customizations, configurations that uh, we have in our existing environments as we as we do reach that major iteration, that major update in the fall or uh, the spring, um, we can expect that, hey, just like normal, we're going to see our customizations, configurations uh, still compatible. Um, and for any of those release documents, uh, right now I think it's just because there's this big paradigm shift to docs.microsoft.com um, and there is admittedly a lot more work to be done there, but um, we do have the release notes. Uh, right now I think it's just the, the 18 release notes, the 2018 release notes for both spring and then the fall, uh, the one that we're gonna see here around the bend. Um, but as we move forward, that's where we're gonna see those, um, uh, those big PDFs uh, that will give us the breakdown of what we can be experiencing there. Um, so in terms of uh, release management and the updates, I, I do wanna th throw a note here. Um, they, have, they have mentioned this, this has been confirmed and this is pretty exciting, especially for those release managers out there. Um, in spring 19, we can expect now, this sometimes can be a moving target, um, but you know, around spring 19, we can expect um, some uh, early release previews in, in lower environments, in sandbox environments. So this is something the community has been asking for for some time. You know, just with that, with that, um, any bug fix, um, you know, break fix, um, anything that we we need to be on top of uh, earlier, the better. You know, so that release management cadence and that regimen can be fine tuned, and we can know we know exactly what's going to be hitting our production environments at the right time. So that's exciting. We'll see early releases coming around the bend um, at the turn of next year, or just after. And like I said, more information, um, docs.microsoft.com. There is a, a good uh, frequently asked questions rundown that was put out pretty recently, as well as some uh, ancillary articles or collateral that uh, give a good, you know, uh, break down the vision of, of uh, what Microsoft is shooting for with this, uh, with these release patterns and the cadence. So I encourage everybody to go check those out. Um, 
it, they they are you know they're they're very informative on not just you know kind of the fluffy vision stuff but also you know here's actually what we're going to be doing and executing and here's what you can expect and and along those here's what you can actually expect lines um, you know as we have this this paradigm shift to common data service. Um, this is how that early release is kind of how we're going to, you know, how we're going to feel it um, as, um, you know, any as an admin or as somebody who's tasked with keeping up an environment or being on top of these releases, you know, they are going to be continuous deployments. They are going to be continuous updates. They are going to be realized in real time. Um, you, I think we will have some flexibility in when we can schedule them to a degree, but it's going to be in a very condensed window. Um, and then, like I said, several weeks for that full release. So for the full breadth of that update being realized, it's not going to be boom, hey, October 21st hits and we have all of it. It's going to be spaced out a little bit. But, you know, with respect to that early release, this is kind of the cadence that we're going to be looking at is um, in the, we have a note here coming in April 2019. That's the sequence that that we can expect, and you'll see that um, uh, right over here. That li that last station to be rolled out to is our is our North America, um, the the tenants in the North American region. So, in, you know, it it is hit sort of last, and and those of us in in North America are going to be on a probably you know if there are any issues, any bugs or anything, more stable uh, release than um, <clears throat> than you know especially the the early releases and and the other regions that are being rolled out to. So, um, you know, what have we seen already? You know, like I said, we have our spring and our fall releases for 2018 that are documented on docs.microsoft.com. But, uh, you know, in earlier in the year or end of last year and earlier um, this year in, in 2018, we got version nine. It was a huge, it was a huge um, bump. You know, a lot of people held off. Um, so there's this new web, there's this new UI uh, experience for people that, um, you know, we're, we're still acclimating to and, and it's a more mobile friendly type of UI. Um, with um, sort of touch optimization here and there, um, different UI components and how things are laid out on forms and whatnot. The unified interface, it's still being worked on. Um, you know, this was introduced, but this is something that is, uh, I mean, this is a big focus for Microsoft. This is the future of, of CRM. This is the future of Dynamics 365. So working on um, some legacy components that had to be rolled into the unified interface and really ratcheting up that experience and optimizing that user experience. And there were even some some newer updates that were just released in the last week or two, um, you know, uh, with uh, with respect to how how we're going to we're going to adhere back to the left nav, and there are some other you know other kind of um, old school, if you will, components that are being rolled back into it to enhance that usability and that experience. Um, the uh, 365 for Outlook app, there are some enhancements in the spring release uh, versus Predict. Uh, so, uh, you know, predictive analytics, um, looking at uh, enhancing lead scoring models intelligently. Um, the out of the box auto numbering capabilities that we have for any entity. Traditionally, we've had auto numbering available for cases, you know, like some, some just maybe three or four entities within the system. But um, using using a specific API within um, you know within Dynamics 365, we can auto number any table. Uh, virtual entities, multi-select option sets, more the configuration side or admi admin side, design side of things, um, but exciting enhancements and um, some of those new features that people are still working with, playing with, and rolling into those larger implementations. Um, we, you know, we saw the advent of uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator integration and universal scheduling, uh, continued enhancements there with respect to field service, project service, and um, uh, Dynamics 365 for marketing. So a whole new application, uh, kind of a whole new world of managing marketing activities, campaigns, uh, you know, designing customer journeys and uh, rolling in event management. It's a pretty, um, it's a pretty substantive application that was rolled in and introduced and a lot of field service project service and unified service desk enhancements that were included as well. So uh, what can we expect in the new release, um, and and right away I, I did just hey this is a this is you know shameless self plug here, but uh, we did just throw up a blog on on the new features we'll be we'll be covering today. So if you want to double back on that, just you know kind of giving a um, 
a text breakdown of some of these features, go ahead and check that out. So for marketing, we're gonna be focusing on custom dashboards and some of the, some of the custom analytics that are included in the marketing application, um, a unified marketing calendar. So a top-down understanding of how campaigns um, are moving through a, a calendar month and, and just understanding what's going on and when. Um, there's an event management piece of that as well, and then LinkedIn integration. So really um, pushing further, further, further into how we can use LinkedIn data, how we can plug into that, and maybe lo looking at a two-way integration versus a one-way data push um, with, uh, you know, with the, with the LinkedIn networks that we have. Um, in sales, we're looking at um, uh, a new a new capability called Playbooks, which is going to be an automated sort of uh, kind of a, an activity roster of uh, you know uh, more 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 of an event driven or a trigger. You know, we'll have a specific trigger that will give our sales team empower our sales team with specific to dos or specific tasks or, or specific activities um, to be more proactive with certain events. Um, LinkedIn Sales Navigator again, so we're going to um, be looking at how that might impact our sales business process and uh, the integration with Microsoft Teams, fast, real-time, um, smart collaboration um, and uh, potentially collateral and sales doc management. And with uh, with service, we're we're taking the universal resource scheduling and um, and really leaning on the new the new paradigm, the new scheduling engine that's you know that's uh, that had been found within field service project service and get it, getting that um, you know really across the core system across service scheduling as a whole versus just within those applications uh, and then the last two there are similar cases in knowledge article recommendation using um, some new uh, full text APIs that are within the system. So um, getting getting intelligent recommendations on, hey, here are some cases that that we think, or you know, that the system thinks are pretty similar to uh, to get that time to resolve down, down, down. And here are knowledge articles that we think will fit, um, you know, with what you're researching right now, and uh, and surfacing those right from a case or right from an incident. So getting right into it, um, we'll kick off with marketing. So um, the new features in marketing, um, you know, I, and I just gave a, a quick and dirty breakdown, but to, to give even more context to what we're talking about. So when, I, when, I, when we're talking about custom dashboards, that's sort of an all-encompassing term or phrase. Uh, you know, within the new uh, Dynamics 365 for marketing application, I do, it, it's, it's fairly new. It was rolled out last year. Uh, it was pretty immature, um, to, be, to be blunt about it. It was a pretty immature product, but a lot of features and a lot of enhancements have come through to make it a lot more stable. And there's some really, really cool things going on inside Dy Dynamics 365 for marketing. So the experience is all through the unified interface. So it does feel a little removed from the traditional web client, but really cool stuff. Um, have been living in that world for the past uh, past couple of months and it's it's neat. I love it. But um, for, for the custom dashboards, really looking at, you know, these enhanced analytics and looking at how can we take these analytics and and do things with them. You know how can we uh, how can we embed or surface or expose these data visuals and um, you know uh, these intelligent analytics in different areas to empower our sales or marketing teams. Um, obviously, marketing um, in this context here, but you know that's between Power BI, new, some of the new features and enhancements that are coming around um, with the new uh, Power BI. Um, the uh, the enhancements and uh, the updates, uh, and then you know DCI or Dynamics 365 customer insights, so that leaning on that AI piece of everything to um, look at trends or to be more proactive with trends, um, and then that third point right there. You know, this is across uh, the Dynamics applications. So I just wanted to quickly highlight that we're not, you know, this isn't, these aren't analytics or um, data visuals that are locked into, confined to just Dynamics 365 for customer engagement or CRM. You know, this is going to be across the gamut with that that unified vision, that common data service. Um, the marketing calendar. So I mentioned, uh, you know, being able to visualize campaigns in a calendar month, you know, day, week, month. Um, it's it's going to be pretty imperative to you know once you get more involved with um, you know any busy seasons or multiple campaigns maybe you're running campaigns against multiple segments or channels or concurrently you're running campaigns through various segments or channels you can visualize that so you have a you know just a visual marker um, on on where are we and you know is there overlap do we need to be concerned about resources do we need to be concerned about budget but just just that you know the simple visual of that marketing calendar 
calendar is going to help out teams quite a bit. And then that uh, the last um, kind of major capability or feature we want to be covering here is the LinkedIn integration. So um, there are going to be uh, enhanced integration points from that LinkedIn sales nav integration. Um, and we're going to be introducing, or you know, Microsoft is gonna be introducing um, uh, enhanced segment and account-based marketing, as well as LinkedIn specific triggers. So when you're mapping out customer journeys, when you're in that, in that marketing automation bucket, uh, you're gonna be able to lean on LinkedIn generated uh, events or those triggers to exact other marketing activities, maybe send an email or, you know, uh, throw into a marketing list or segment or something like that. Um, so that's pretty powerful. And then the dynamics, the the customer insights analytics um, to look at the effectiveness of that, of how we're plugging into LinkedIn. And, you know, when we are generating leads or in tying them to accounts in Dynamics 365 for marketing, what does that mean? Giving us a smart rundown of that activity generated from that side of the fence. Um, and then that last uh, bit right there, uh, just a roadmap item. We are looking at custom activities being introduced. So, you know, we, alongside uh, emails, phone calls, tasks, fact, you know, the, the traditional activities and activity management within Dynamics 365, we're looking at um, uh, the uh, in-mails. So uh, custom activities being um, LinkedIn in-mails and then the LinkedIn presentations. There's a specific name for that that's escaping me right now, but um, the actual presentation collateral that's on, uh, that, that can be embedded on LinkedIn profiles or pages. So the custom dashboards, I just wanted to highlight, you know, this is this is a, a, an example of kind of a, a base customer jur uh, journey dashboard that you'd find within the Dynamics 365 for marketing application. So when you go, like I mentioned, this is embedded or this is run through the unified interface. So you, you go to that marketing application. On the left-hand side there, you're gonna have your core entities, your core components of the marketing application. You'll have your breadcrumbs in your context, your system context at the very top in the, the uh, nav bar there. Uh, but this this dashboard breaks down on the left hand, just moving left to right very quickly, the active customer journeys. So what's going on? And we'll take a look at what how that how that um, feeds into the marketing calendar in a second. But you know, what are those active journeys that are going on right now that I have to be aware of, uh, regardless of role on the marketing team? In the middle pane right there, <clears throat> the number of widgets. Um, and you, you know, this this does feel have that same feel feel as the, you know, the interactive service hub uh, or um, uh, uh, Microsoft social engagement. So <clears throat> it's a fast, snappy UI. So you have your widgets and your analytics in the middle of the middle of the page there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and on the on the far right hand side there, um, just other other breakdowns, you know, so you'll have uh, tradition, the traditional my records, so my live journeys, my customer journeys, and then team based or those that are on your team. So just some rundowns of different numbers across the system. So using these these snappy analytics, using um, the, the more predictive or the more intelligent analytics within some of these dashboards, um, you know, it's, it's going to empower marketing teams quite a bit. Uh, and I did mention another part of this is a lot of Power BI enhancements that are coming through too. So um, quite literally, Power BI, all the things. I, and I'm not gonna. I don't. We don't have time today to really go through all of the Power BI capabilities and the components that are coming through. But just to very, very briefly touch on them. Um, we're going to have the ability uh, ability to embed Power BI uh, elements and some of those Power BI visuals within Dynamics Portals dashboards. So if you're if you're leveraging Dynamics Portal capabilities at all, the ability to to drop those Power BI elements is going to be pretty slick. Um, Finance and operation workspace pins, we're gonna be able to pin uh, Power BI elements to those FNO workspaces. There is going to be a business central experience that's included in the new updates, um, enhanced power apps integrations, the ability to drop some of those uh, more immersive data visuals, desktop, mobile, and just general platform enhancements to the services, um, some of the custom visuals, and then just continuing that, that drive toward that common data service for Power BI and how it touches all the different applications uh, on on the platform. Um, so the the calendar that we've been talking about, just to give you that uh, that that quick visual, there, it doesn't look like there's a, there's much to this, but like I said, it's just that 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 simple ability to go to 
uh, and visualize what the team is doing. You know, uh, ability to, to access this calendar and know what the team has going on in a specific week or quarter or busy season or what have you. So um, right here we see active customer journeys. So this is this is where we have those uh, potentially more drawn out or uh, more substantive campaigns, those customer journeys that you'll be mapping out and drawing up within the marketing application. Uh, the other part of this too is that we can track our events. So there's a there's an event management component to Dynamics 365 for marketing that allows you to spin up, um, you know, the the uh, speakers, the sessions, the uh, down to the buildings and the rooms and the resources. You know, the, it's a pretty immersive experience. And the nice thing is from the calendar here, we're not only given or afforded the ability to track these events and the campaigns and the uh, the active customer journeys, but from the calendar we can spin up sessions and and add, you know specifically with respect to event management, be able to add um, the, the the pieces of those events. So any sessions, any tracks, things like that, right from the calendar. So a different entry point for spinning up and managing um, some of those event um, record types and some of those event records, but uh, it, it's pretty cool stuff. And uh, just marketing activities, you know, uh, that last bullet there, uh, the ability to visualize this in one place. And obviously you see it's color coded, it's nice, it's organized. We have just the the title of the record or the name of the record there. Not a, not a whole lot to this, but it does provide that top-down visibility and accessibility with respect to what the marketing team might be doing. So for that, the enhanced LinkedIn, uh, that 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 next step of that integration, um, this is uh, an example of a, being able to add. I, I think in this example here, we're looking at LinkedIn ads. So um, it, this this pane over here that you see, this is within the marketing application, so within the unified interface, this is that customer journey we've been talking about. So if you haven't been familiar with that or you know, you haven't been introduced to customer journeys, um, you know, we have in Click Dimensions or other applications, other marketing suites that are out there, you know, you have a visual campaign editor. So you can drag and drop. Here's our here's our segment that we're working with. So here here's the you know the body of contacts or accounts or leads that um, we're going to be targeting to kick things off. And then you draw in, drag and drop other elements so as you progress through that customer journey hence the title journey um, you know you'll be splitting uh, people off you might be a B testing you might be waiting you might have an email send you might be directing people to a web form or a landing page so there are a lot of really cool things you can do with the visual drag and drop campaign editor or the customer journey editor and one of those things that we're gonna see with the update is the ability to bring in these LinkedIn specific triggers these these LinkedIn specific content types to this customer journey. So that's pretty exciting. So for sales, New features in sales, like I, I did mention earlier, playbooks. So, you know, it, it really boils down to, um, you know, say a, a contact is deactivated or uh, somebody is being pulled out of a sales cycle or there's a specific event, a specific happening, a specific occurrence. Um, and we need to, in a proactive fashion, dole out and assign, you know, either tasks or multiple activity types, uh, kind of a, a literal playbook of things that we have to manage and that we have to do based on certain inputs or based on certain events or triggers. So event-driven sales activities, it's smart, it's predictive, it's proactive. And it's, you know, when, when we're talking, we just talked through a lot of marketing automation, but this is bringing that same concept, um, trying to be proactive and trying to be intelligent and really empowering the team with automation to the sales side of things. So um, automating that activity roster and, you know, understanding those scenarios um, within which these playbooks can be leveraged. Uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, so we're gonna have the ability to integrate LinkedIn specific data points into business process flows. I, truth be told, have not seen this in action, um, both for playbooks and the Sales Navigator. I have not been privy to any, you know, any any preview instances or anything like that, but just from reading the release notes and going through all the, the resources that are out there, it sounds really exciting. So being able to surface that, uh, some of those fundamental, some of those, those data points um, from LinkedIn records, you know, as you're using that now more more or less two-way LinkedIn sales navigator integration from Dynamics 365, drawing up that data into business process flow. So it's a key piece of your sales business process. And then 
a, a broader fuller Microsoft Teams integration. So, you know, what does that mean? Meaningful collaboration, not just, you know, hey, we have different access points from Teams or 365, but, you know, some, you know being able to surface, um, you know, when we update a record or we're adding collateral, you know, some of that sales documentation, um, meaningful collaboration from either side of the fence. So for playbooks, again, just as a recap, this is event-driven, um, you know, spinning up of, of activities or that, that activity roster. Um, and, and really the, the goal being empowering the sales team. Um, and, and I did draw this right from the release notes, um, but you know you can configure playbooks and, uh, you, and define that set of activities um, to, to automate. So as I mentioned, we have, we have uh, a lot by way of marketing automation now with a new application and, you know, SFA Salesforce automation has been, um, you know, a key piece of implementations that I've been a part of, but now it's bringing it to a neck, uh, bringing that to a, to the next level, uh, being able to organize this almost at a meta level. Um, you know, we, we can, we can spin up activities with workflows. So we are looking historically with, with the tools that we already have in place, you know, spinning up tasks and assigning them based on different events or triggers in the system. You know, we can, we can spin up activities, but this gives us a, a new method of organization. It gives us a lot more control over how these things are, are spinning out and, uh, and, you know, getting these activity rundowns for any of our sales team members. Um, and then we can track the, the status of uh, running playbooks. So when those events trigger this, this automation of giving us these tasks or activities, uh, we, can, we can see progress and, and, and the process through uh, how, we're, how we're doing um, with respect to that playbook. LinkedIn, um, again, the, the deeper integration here as a recap, business process flows. Um, so uh, getting that fundamental data about the, the accounts or about the companies and the contacts and the people. Um, the w One of the things that Microsoft highlights is the ability to, um, in, a, in an intelligent way, highlight conversation starters. So, you know, moving away from those uh, cold calls, those cold intros, where you're you're going from nothing, you're going from from flatline to building up that relationship, highlighting some sort of data point, some sort of share, something based on that that um, uh, network aggregation, all the data that's coming in, something that you can point to or surface for your sales teams that will afford them the ability to go in on a warmer level, something that's not flatline, something that's not just cold and and you know, uh, they have to completely build up from something that they can actually latch onto and, um, and get that conversation started. And then the last point here, people recommendations. So, um, you know, LinkedIn will, you know, other social networks will say, you know, recommend, recommended friend or recommended connect, connection based on somebody that you know or somebody that you're connected to. But um, this is going to put that professional spin on it. It's going to look at some of those key decision makers and some of the leads that you have targeted in, in Sales Navigator and make recommendations off of that. So again, predicated on intelligence, predicated on um, related aggregate data that, uh, that the tool, that the system, that the application is gonna be looking at and feeding back to you. And then the last piece of the uh, of the sales breakdown of the sales features we wanted to cover um, the the teams integration. So on the right hand side there, that's just a simple screen of um, when you're going in and, and connecting teams and, and 365. Uh, you know, just kind of what one of those splash pans is going to look like. It's it's simple, it's intuitive, it's easy to use. But for the for the the updates and that enhanced integration, again, we're looking at. We're looking for fast, meaningful collaboration. So we have heavy teams on, on our team anyway. We have heavy teams users. We have heavy Dynamics 365 users. We have we have users that are um, really living in both. But this unifies that collaboration, whether you're you know partial to one or the other, and it connects those teams. So. Um, it's going to make things more efficient. It's going to um, give you that that real time understanding again, whichever application you're really living in, um, of what's going on with specific records. Now there is the you know the uh, the idea that you have to be tying specific Teams channels to specific Dynamics 365 records, but it does provide that two way visibility. There's a manual component to this. Let's not you know sugarcoat that. But you know it we're going to be able to see on either side um, some of those record updates and some of the activity that. That's going on on those records and then 
One piece that I thought was pretty cool is the ability to share and co-author uh, the sales collateral. So any sales documentation that you have going on, um, it, it's going to provide a unified and consistent uh, uh, way to access, way to uh, drop and access this sales documentation or this collateral that the team might be using. So if you're in Dynamics 365, you're going to a record, you're going to be able to find the same, I mean, you know, we have SharePoint integrations that provide a, a similar experience where we have a, a shared repository, a central repository of all that documentation that we're using uh, for these specific records. But the tie into Teams is great. Uh, I mean, the, the, the future for Teams is so, so bright. I love it. And I'm really looking forward to um, a, a deeper integration with uh, with Dynamics 365 and what we can do for um, you know that that collaborate collaboration piece of everything. So service. Um, so new features in service, universal resource scheduling. So I have a note here, out with the old, in with the new. If you've been using CRM for quite some time uh, or even you know a, a, a year, two years, um, very recently, um, the service scheduling piece of the system was pretty clunky and there were a lot of uh, pretty legacy kind of outdated components or uh, pieces of the service scheduling capabilities within the system. So uh, with the with the rise of uh, the advent of field service and project service, uh, that that core service scheduling is now going to rest on, on that platform or rest on that design um, and integration with the universal resource scheduling. So using, you know, um, pieces of traditional service scheduling like services and service activities, but um, but you know being able to uh, just go about it in a, in a far more efficient, um, far more visible and accessible and, and intuitive way to to schedule your resources, manage all of your resources. Um, and that last bullet that I have there, uh, which I thought was really cool, um, there are a couple of uh, areas in the new update where they're offering tools uh, like this, but we're, there is going to be um, some migration tooling available for anybody that's, um, you know, if you're really immersed in that legacy service scheduling piece of the system, being able to take what you, your, you know, take your current implementation and bring that to the new world with universal resource scheduling. I've not seen a ton of documentation on this, so I can't really fully speak to what that's going to look like, if it's a specific tool, if it's just going to be some IP from Microsoft, but I thought that was great, you know, to be able to bring people into into the URS world. Uh, the next major capability, so um, intelligence, again, um, you know, uh, being able to rest on um, AI and some of the, you know, some of the APIs and, and uh, additional tools within the system for similar case suggestions. So giving guidance, providing that guidance to get that average handling time down. Um, you know, get get to that resolution more quickly and get our customers uh, satisfaction scores up and uh, along very similar lines. Uh, in fact, both of them, both uh, both similar case suggestions as well as not knowledge article recommendations are using the the same uh, the uh, a shared feature um, text API within the system to give smart recommendations on finding relevant knowledge articles. So for the uh, for the universal resource scheduling, and, and if if nobody's been in living in field service or project service, um, you know, prior to now, um, this is just a visual, just a quick uh, a quick. Um, snapshot of that that uh, scheduling board so you can see already i mean this is this is bringing bringing that scheduling into the new world uh it's not going to be as clunky it's not going to be um as potentially convoluted as as uh you know prior to the urs rollout but um, we are going to have a better grip a better handle on the resources that are a part of projects or you know resources that are um, a part of the scheduling the new ui it's it's a far better ui um than than going into the service calendar and getting into the nitty-gritty of the legacy service scheduling and then you know there are enhanced capabilities from this calendar as well or from the scheduling board as well so filterability drilling in um, and uh, you know the, uh, the ability to maneuver between some of these resources in a more intuitive fashion Similar case suggestions. So the next two, like I said, are pretty similar. Um, you know, they're 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 tied together by some some core functionality or or uh, core pieces. But um, to recap, I mean, uh, similar cases. It's an intelligent guidance on. Uh, 
any cases that have been resolved in the past. So you're looking um, for some of those uh, those cases that might tie into the resolution to the case you're working on right now or the ticket that you're working on right now. Um, and and the new feature that I that I've referenced a couple of times now is text analytics API. So it's going to give a full text um, analysis as well as all the case records that you have or the, all those tickets or incidents that you have within the system as well as information and data points pulled from related records to that case and provide those suggestions. So when you're when you're on a case, you know you have your list of cases, your incidents, you pick one, um, and you you jump right into the record, and you, you'll see uh, with the general info, the timeline on the far right hand side there, that's where we have related cases. So or the 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 similar cases underneath that related section. So it's not like it's um, you know living in the related uh, records, or it's it's kind of a hop, skip, and a jump away from the general information of the case. I mean, this is embedded right on the summary, you know, right on the form. It's going to be at your fingertips as soon as you jump into that case. Um, and and similarly, we have of knowledge article recommendations. So just pointing our service agents, pointing the people who are in these cases, resolving these cases in the right in the right way. If you are using knowledge management, it's really cool. If you're not, um, you know, the ability to uh, completely analyze all the text within those knowledge articles, surface them very snappy, very fast, right on that case form. But again, this does use that text analytics API to go through and tie that in with all the related records and provide those intelligent, you know, intelligent suggestions, um, getting into the, that smart decision making. And and before jumping into the additional updates and some of these other these ancillary pieces, I do want to highlight if you haven't caught on by now, uh, the new updates and this 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 new world that we're jumping into for Dynamics 365, I, I've, I think I've said the word intelligent probably 10 times, um, you know, smart, intelligent, um, AI driven. This, we're gonna see a lot more of this uh, pop up in the major releases, um, you know, leaning on things like customer insights, leaning on things like the LinkedIn integrations, looking at aggregate networks, looking at uh, related data points and these, you know, text analytics APIs, like what we're looking at right here for the knowledge article and suggested cases. Um, we're looking at, leveraging a system that can do work for us, leveraging a smart system, leveraging an intelligent system, leveraging pieces of Dynamics 365 that can can look and, and execute work on the back end to surface what we need when we need it, when we're jumping from an account to a case, to a contact, to, you know, an XRM, custom entity, whatever the case might be. Uh, you know, intelligence is is a is a strong theme. Um, it's here and and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna see a lot more developed on that front as we move forward. So just a quick a quick update um, on or a quick rundown of some of the additional things that we're going to be seeing here. So um, along with the marketing sales and service, we have um, engagement hubs. So this is the interactive service hub, if anybody's been using that in the past. So we have updates coming on that level, unified service desk, uh, portal capabilities. I've already talked about that. Um, I'm living in that myself right now. So I'm really excited for what's to come here in the, in the update as we move from October through the end of the year. Field service, project service, social engagement. Um, I did kind of lump all the other major applications. So, you know, historically AX or finance and operations, talent, retail, business central, um, a lot coming on those fronts as well. Um, mixed reality applications. I've seen some amazing demos, especially as it ties into field service and, and IOT, internet of things. Um, uh, you know that that augmented reality or that mixed reality assistance for any anybody in the field really cool stuff um, Continued enhancements and integrations with power apps and the common data service that we're moving to power bi like we've hit on and uh, and enhanced flow and data integrations, too, so uh, You know, it's a lot we have uh, a lot coming through and I definitely encourage everybody to check out the the release notes so that's going to give you a lot of information on all of these different corners um, you know and, and pay pay strong attention to the marketing sales and service updates that we have coming for the core you know the core system so um, just quickly the resources I do have included here um, the 
uh, resources that I leaned on to generate all of this content. So um, a couple of other uh, uh, individuals in the channel here at the bottom there, we have uh, Juka and, and Joel. Um, MVPs, uh, fantastic. I mean, they, 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 I think Joel Lindstrom's nickname is, is literally just Google. So um, uh, really, I mean, uh, these guys have been around the block uh, for years and years and years, and uh, they have some great blogs and some great information. So along with that, my blog is at the top there, the Stone Ridge one, and then uh, our release notes and a couple of uh, uh, resources geared toward the release management and the cadence and this new vision for how we're updating Dynamics 365.